Now we're going to discuss how Solidity computes the storage slot for arrays and mappings. If an array is fixed, it's going to behave pretty conventionally. It's no different than if you had done something like uh, UN256A, UN256B, UN256C, UN256D. So the 0, 1, 2, and 3 index would correspond to these variables over here, as I will demonstrate below. So I have the constructor setting fixed array to 99, 999, and so on. And if we are to load the fixed array and look at its slot and simply add the index to it, we're going to be able to pull those values out. So let's do that. Our function is fixed array view. And if we look at 0, we get 99, 1, we get 999, and 2, we get 99999. What about for arrays that have dynamic length? If you were to look inside of this storage slot, which is what we do with this uh, function over here, big array length, it's going to look inside of big array and get its slot. As you can kind of infer from the name of the function, if we look at big array length, it's going to be three, which is what we expect because we loaded uh, three items in there. If we were to add a fourth one, then we would see that this becomes four. This is what is being stored inside of this storage slot. So we can get the length from big array like that, but how do we get the items that are inside of it? Now, they're not going to be stored sequentially down the slots like they would with a fixed array. And the reason for that is that this could overrun and then crash into something down below it. So what Solidity does instead is quite interesting. What it's gonna do, it's gonna take the slot of where that array is, and then it's going to take the catchac 256 of it. That gives you the location, and then as you want to read items sequentially on the array, then you would just simply add the index. So this is a hash plus one plus two plus three of that hash. So why do they do that? Well, when you take a hash of a number, then it's just going to land in this extremely enormous 256-bit space. Chances are you're not going to be able to add enough numbers to that hash in order for it to crash into something else, because 2 to the 256 is a mind-bogglingly huge number. And that's Solidity's methodology to be able to grow arrays in an unlimited way and not crash into any other storage slots. Let's see that in action. So if we read the big array, we get a value of 10 back. And how is that being read? That's just looking inside the Ketchak 256 of the slot of this array. And then as we're changing the index here, we're just adding to the index, as mentioned earlier. These values match what we have over here. Okay, what about small array? Well, in storage, Solidity tries to pack variables. So if we read small array, we are going to get three back, which is what we expect. But if we were to do something similar, uh, read small array length at zero, I've actually configured this to return a bytes 32, so it's a little bit more clear what's going on. And it's going to do the same thing. It's going to find the catchac 256 of the slot for that array, and then we're going to see one, two, and three over here, which is exactly what it should be. Now this is uint8, right? And uint8 is one byte, so this is one byte, and this is another byte, and this is another byte. Mappings behave quite similar to arrays, actually. What an array does is it takes the storage slot, takes the hash of that, and then starts adding zero, one, two, three, four in order to get the array. What the mapping does is it concatenates the key with the storage slot, and as you change the key, then that concatenated value changes, and that gives you a different storage location. Let's see that in action. So in get mapping, first we get the slot, and that will be our slot over here. Then it is concatenated with the key that we pass in, and then we take the Ketchak 256 of that. So note that each of these Ketchak 256s that we've looked at all take the slot as one of the items that generates the hash. That guarantees that the output is going to be unique as long as the hash doesn't collide. So if we were to concatenate 10 with the slot of this variable over here, we expect to get 5 back. So let's put 10 into my mapping, and we get 5 back. Well, oops, I put it into the wrong function. This is, my mapping is actually uh, the original thing over there with the public getter function put in. But let's uh, actually do that the interesting way and look inside of get mapping, which is over here. Now, if we put in 10, we expect to get five. And 10 came in here. We concatenated 10 with the storage slot of my mapping, got the location, and then did an sload. Nested mappings are just hashes of hashes. So first we start with the slot as usual, and then this two is the first key inside of this nested map. Then we take the catchac 256 of that, and then concatenate it with the next key, take the catchac 256 of that, and then put it in to the S load. This add zero actually doesn't accomplish anything. I'm not sure why I wrote that, but as you can see, it's not going to change the value. In the constructor, I've set the nested mapping to be two and four, which is why you saw two and four this way. So note that the concatenation and hashing goes in a leftward direction, even though the mapping goes to the right. So let's get our nested mapping. 
and it returns seven. Oh yeah, we hard coded the keys just for simplicity, but it's looking at two and then it looks at four and according to the constructor, two and four should produce seven. Now, the nice thing about concatenating the variables is you're not restricted to using integers as the hash key. You could use an address. And I'm gonna also use this opportunity to do something a little bit more complicated. We'll take an address to a dynamically long array. So why is this interesting? Well, there's two things. Well, one, we have to store the length of this array somewhere, and then we have to store the actual values. So let's see how we would do it in Yule. So first of all, to get its length, we will concatenate the slot with the key. I've just hard-coded this so I don't have to keep copying and pasting this. And then we take the catchact 256. So, so far that behaves like a normal mapping. What it's saying is if you just treated this like a mapping that went, say, from an address to UN 256, this is going to give you back the length of this array, which we are able to see here. The length of the nested array is three, which it is like this. Now, how do we get the values out? Well, what we're going to have to do in that situation is take the catchact 256 of that again. So originally we concatenated the slot with the key and then took the catchack. But if we just take the catchack one more time on that same thing, then that will give us the location. And just like the array case, we simply add the index to it. So get address to list, if we look at zero, is going to give us 42. If we look at one, 1337, and two is 777, which is just what we expect them to be. Now writing simply happens in the reverse. I've shown you how to get the storage location that Solidity calculates in order to generate these mappings. You would use the same algorithm to get that storage lot and then slot and then do an S store instead. As an exercise, you can do something funky, like having a map pointing to a struct pointing to a dynamic array and so on, but the principles will remain the same. 